Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Ramsey, and I'm the Communications Director of the Center for Human Rights in Iran, where we've just released a new briefing on the difficulties people in Iran experience when they try to use international tech products due to U.S. sanctions. But did you know that U.S. sanctions don't technically block this activity? There is a license, General License D1, that allows it, yet companies are reluctant to sell their products to Iranians or allow them to use their free services because they're afraid of violating sanctions. U.S. sanctions are complicated and violating them is a major problem for companies, so oftentimes they just don't deal with Iran to avoid the problem altogether. Yet this leaves Iranians increasingly vulnerable to their government's online surveillance and censorship campaigns. Speaking to me about this issue today is David Kay. He's a clinical professor of law at the University of California, Irvine, and he served as the UN Special Rapporteur on the promotion and protection of the right to freedom of speech and expression. He's also the author of Speech Police, The Global Struggle to Govern the Internet. David, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, you've worked a lot on countries where governments have impeded their citizens' access to information and the internet. In this case, it's not just the Iranian government, but it's also foreign entities that are impeding Iranians' internet freedom rights. I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about why it's important to protect internet freedom, not just in your own country, but around the world. Why should we care when others don't have the same rights we do? It's a great question, um, but it also, I think, reflects the nature of the human rights guarantee to freedom of expression. One of the things that freedom of expression guarantees as a matter of international human rights law is the right to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers. And we often don't focus on the regardless of frontiers part of it quite enough. Because what does that mean? I mean, it means on the one hand that I have the right to seek information from abroad, from outside my own national borders, which is every Iranian's right and every human's right, frankly. But it also means that I have the right sitting here in the United States or elsewhere around the world to receive information from Iran. But my right to seek information is regardless of frontiers. And so I think that if we imagine a world in which countries get to block information, either from coming in or going out, we also start to have a world in which people don't know one another, they don't know about their lives. It has a deep impact, not only on our understanding across cultures, but also it feeds into our foreign policies, uh, into our human rights policies, into tech policies. Uh, so I think that if we if we start to understand that human right as being transboundary, we can really see how it has a deep impact on both the audience and the author or speaker. Okay, I wonder, David, if you could talk a little bit about um, what happens to a society when people can't freely access the internet, and specifically about Iran, civil society in Iran. So, um, so one of the things I think that's really remarkable about, uh, about Iran, about Iranians um, and their access to the internet is how resourceful uh, Iranians have been in seeking out information. And that, that means seeking information that's part of global politics and public debate, but also seeking out entertainment and culture and um, access to information about human rights, about reproductive health, about all sorts of things that may be difficult to access in the country uh, itself. And that resourcefulness, that ability to find, for example, the VPN, the virtual private network that allows them to circumvent the restrictions that the government has placed on access to information can be really quite remarkable. I think the problem for Iranians is really quite deep and that is, in seeking to access this kind of information, oftentimes they're actually violating the law. And that violation can either be, you know, one that imposes a real direct uh, restriction on them. It could result in detention, even uh, prison. Uh, it could result in all sorts of other kind of sanction on a particular individual. Um, the, the problem though, 
isn't only the possibility of that kind of uh, a disciplinary action, essentially. It's also the, the chilling effect that that kind of law has on the individual's willingness to access that information. And so even for those who aren't sent to prison over accessing information with some you know, charge concocted by the prosecutors, um, there's also the situation where there's probably huge numbers of people who are deterred from getting access to entertainment, to global debate, to access information, simply because those penalties are out there.